All right, it's 5.30. I'm going to go ahead and call the Thursday, October 12th meeting of the HWMA in session. I'll start by taking a roll. Um, Meredith Matthews, I'm here. Um, Vice Chair Jones? Here. Um, Director Castellano is absent, and we have her um, backup, uh, Renee? Here. All right. Um, Director Katie? Here. Director Madrone is absent. And Director Wilson? All right. All right, we're going to start with the consent calendar. So all matters listed under the consent calendar are considered to be routine by the HWMA board and will be enacted upon in one motion. Unless a specific request for review is made by the board member or a member of the public, the consent calendar will not be read. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless pulled for discussion. So we have A, approved minutes from the September 14th, 2023 HWMA Board of Directors special meeting. Approved request for proposal for Cummings Road Landfill um, Leachate Transportation Disposal Services and C, approved resolution 2024-02, resolution of the Humboldt Waste Management Authority authorizing the authority to enter into an agreement with Umqua Bank Commercial Credit Card Program. Do I have any directors that want to pull any items off the consent calendar? All right, good motion. I would make a motion. Sorry, I would make a motion that we accept the consent calendar as delivered. I second that motion. All right, we have um, Vice Chair Jones uh, that made a motion and Director Katie that second. Um, next up is oral and written communication. Uh, the point of order, we need a vote. Oh, sorry, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All, any opposed? Did you, all right, okay. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> that's all right, all right. For the consent calendar? Okay, I apologize. Any members of the public wish to pull anything from the consent calendar? All right. All right, now we are on to oral and written communications. Um, this time is provided for people to address the board or to submit written communication conserving matters not on this agenda. Any members of the public wish to? Anybody on Zoom? All right, I'll close um, oral and written communication. All right, next we have um, number four, receive presentation outlining independent auditor's report for fiscal year 2021 to 2022. Director Keller Heckman, can we get a staff report, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. So just as a brief overview, the annual audit uh, of the authority's financial statements is generally a tool which the board and staff um, can use to measure the fiscal health of the responsibility of, of the authority. Um, generally, you receive these in February or March of this fiscal year, but due to some turnover at key management positions um, and some scheduling issues with the JJCPA financial firm, uh, you were receiving this quite a bit later than usual. Um, this has, uh, for the record, already been submitted um, to the state controller uh, because that deadline was a couple months ago. Uh, so that has actually already been pre-submitted and you are getting an overview from Joseph Arch, um, one of the principals at JJCPA, and I believe he is on Zoom and we will pass it over to him. Thank you, Eric. Um, so as Eric said, usually you're, um, I'm usually presenting the June 30, 23 at an October meeting. So. Um, so this particular audit did have one finding primarily because of the change in staff and the delay in the audit. Um, like Eric said, it didn't prevent us from uh, transmitting it to the state to make sure that the authority remained uh, in conformity with the uh, government code for submitting it prior to uh, June 30th. Uh, since the report was complete and all of our work was completed. So, so um, given that you've replaced the positions uh, at the director level and the finance level, um, you probably won't see that finding continuing um, into the next audit. Um, and I think we have our field work scheduled for 
for June 30, 23 next week. So, um, so we'll be working with Hillary on, on that one. Just some overview of the financial statements. Um, this uh, report does not include a management discussion analysis, which is usually what I like to talk about uh, in an audit. Uh, kind of gives the changes from year to year and that kind of thing. Just briefly, uh, you added to your net position uh, about $400,000 um, on a year to year basis. Part of that includes the estimate change for the closure of the landfill. Um, so there's um, an evaluation adjustment that takes place every year. And this year it was about 180,000. And the prior years it was about, excuse me, 390,000. So, um, that's in general uh, just kind of an overview. I'm also here for questions. The other thing I wanted to point out on the cash flow statement on page seven, um, you added to your cash balances, which indicates that your operating activities are still, um, you're covering your expenses uh, with your, the cash flow coming from your revenues. So the receipts are, are higher than your expenses for both employee costs and supplier costs. So, um, so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'm here for questions. All right, I'll open it up to the board. Does anybody have any questions? I'll start, maybe somebody will wanna jump in. So um, it looked like um, there was only one finding, so congratulations. So this is the 21-22 audit, so this is when um, Jill was still the director, correct? So, um, and I think the one finding was about the finance director, so now, is there kind of something in place for, if, God forbid, anything should happen? Do we have like a, a plan B if we ever find ourselves without a finance director again? Yeah, I think Director Heacock and I went through a little bit of tumultuation in that time period, um, but we went through a process that in order that allowed us to find an out of authority controller so that that would kind of be the process that we would go through is we would find another individual that we could bring in um, in the interim um, we also used uh, Jamie Corsetti uh, she was one of the she's a CPA that we've utilized for audit preparation as well um, so she has offered in the future if we need her services as well um, so we do have kind of a, a backup plan should there be any turnover issues at the top and that that also includes with the executive director as well how long have we been using these auditors? Are they like pretty familiar with the JPA? Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> I think Joe could probably tell you, but I want to say it's close to 10 years, I want to believe. Don't you have to uh, change every so many years, council? I mean, so we are, be, we are very close to that. We will most likely be looking at an RFP for audit services come the future. But one of the rules is you don't have to – there's a certain amount of time where you have to change the firm, and then there's a certain amount of time where you have to change the auditor itself in that firm. Um, so generally, Joe would not be presenting here tonight because um, he did not complete this audit itself. Uh, Fortune um, was our auditor and has been for the past two years as well. He had uh, a personal issue that he couldn't make it tonight. So Joe stepped in at the last minute. Yeah, no worries. I mean, I think that we're more interested in seeing next year's audit um, and also the budget, you know, so we can ask some questions about that. But for right now, it looks like a really clean audit. So anybody else have any questions? I will jump in. Um, you mentioned the Cummings landfill. And it looks like that is, I've seen a decrease is from what I could see in the figures. Um, will that continue to decrease as we proceed onward into the next year? So, so that's valued by an external 
firm that does exclusive um, landfill closure and post closure cost reports. So, so there's, I believe you have that uh, report done every three years. So, uh, so it may typically it does decrease over time um, because it doesn't cost as much to um, maintain the site um, as as it gets older. So, um, but uh, that's. Um, that I mean I can't speak to that because I don't do the valuation. So it would be the um, you can you can look at actually look at the valuation report and it usually shows a decreasing amount over time. So should I just butt in really quickly and tell Supervisor Ma Director Madrone, no, you're not needed for a quorum. So go ahead, you're good. Thanks. Um. To dovetail off of what uh, Mr. Arch said, the evaluation for the landfill has to be done with Cal Recycle every five years. Um, so we have our firm um, over in Reading. They work with Cal Recycle to develop a five-year renewal for the liability with maintaining the landfill. Um, the reduction you'll see, now, we can't guarantee that there will always re be a reduction, but in the past, five to 10 years, um, you'll continue to see a reduction because the amount of time that we're liable for maintaining the landfill also is reduced. So normally when you close a landfill, you're responsible for 30 years of post-closure maintenance. Um, we are at year in this one, I think it's 25. So 2022, 23 fiscal year, you'll see 24 years left. 2023, 24, you'll see 23 years left. So eventually the liability continues to decrease with how long you have to continually maintain the landfill. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? I can open it up to the public. Does anybody in the public have any questions about the audit? No, anybody online? All right, I'll bring it back to the directors. All right, looks like we're pretty good. Um, Director Keller Heckman, what do you need from us? Just a motion to accept? Yeah, you can motion um, to receive the presentation outlining independent auditor's report for fiscal year 21-22. Uh, to be filed with authority archives, state controller, and required financial institutions. So now you can just say staff's recommendation. Does anybody want to make that motion? I'll make a motion that we accept staff's presentation. Second. All right. We have a Director Wilson making that motion and Director Katie second it. Um, Director Wilson, make sure I think you have to make sure to turn your microphone on when you're talking or else it's not recorded, but we're good. All right. So next up is um, board member reports. Any, any further discussion oh. and then vote. Thanks. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Is everybody in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Anybody opposed? No. All right. So the motion passes. And now we are on to um, board member reports. Does anybody have anything to report? Oh, I just wanted to report that Blue Lake had another successful Green Waste Day last Saturday, October 7th. We did have to compete with the Medieval Festival going on, which was interesting because there was very little parking in the town and traffic was pretty heavy considering how it usually is. But it was a successful Green Waste and we will continue to have these every other month. All right, um, we'll move on to the executive director's report. Director Keller Heckman, anything to report? Uh, not at this time. All right, I guess we will then move into closed session. So we have um, a closed session um, conference with legal counsel regarding existing or anticipated litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9D2. I make a motion that we go into closed session per government code. 
uh, this board doesn't usually make motions to go into closed session. I know that Blue Lake City Council does that, um, but that, that yeah. it's just a matter of procedure, that's all. I'll retract my motion in that case. Are we going to stay in here or are we going to go in that conference? Yeah, all right. 